We're going to be reacting to Nakey Jakey. Bethesda game design was outdated a decade ago. Couldn't agree more. Let's see what he has to say about it. Let's get straight into it. Can I wait? We hunger. I have made the not music. one, but two separate videos claiming that Blank's game design is outdated. Sure. And while I'm very proud of those videos, and I pretty confidently stand by <laughs> those critiques... Wait, 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 wait. He's on a yoga board in a mountain. Why is my brain not racking that I'm up just till now? I'm planning on never using the same outdated <laughs> title again because I just didn't want it to become this gross YouTuber-y series where I'm just the outdated guy. What is up, gamers? Welcome back to part 39 <laughs> of Outdated <laughs> Stuff. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this expired banana Ew. on the counter. Ew. If that ain't outdated, why do, then why <laughs> you, like, you better call the dog that, catcher because they must be fighting so the dogs out here. But when thinking about the past 10 years of Bethesda Game Studios catalog, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, a billion more versions of Skyrim, and now sure. Starfield. There is not a more succinct or accurate word to describe how I feel about these games. I have personally made things that some people... I, I mentioned this in the comments quite a while ago. Um, Skyrim or Bethesda are making you pay for some mods on Skyrim now. And not for all mods, don't get me wrong, it's not all mods, but there has been like petitions out for modders to get paid for putting mods up, but Bethesda takes a cut. Just saying, that's absolutely mental. You're paying for mods now. Skyrim hasn't been milked enough in their eyes, and do you know what? I'm not a Bethesda hater, but that, that after the, the, the disgusting output of Fallout 76 and the terrible release of self-proclaimed best game ever of Starfield, Bethesda's not in my good books. People did not like and criticized, and that's great. Honestly, that's fine. That's exactly how it should be. Why am I saying that right now? Just to say that I know what it feels like. I want to make it clear that I have a lot of respect and appreciation for the hardworking individual yeah. devs that crunch 12-hour days to release AAA games on time that we all mm -hmm. get to play. Thank you for yep. making video games, everyone who makes video games out here in the prairie. So I promise I in. don't mean to be hyperbolic or dramatic just for the sake of it when I say I I am truly baffled by Starfield. It is seriously shocking to see just how little this game attempts to improve or even successfully reuse the same mm -hmm. formula and same Frankenstein game engine that Bethesda mm -hmm. have been selling to their fans for well over a decade. I cannot understand how this is the space adventure Todd Howard has dreamt of making for 25 yep. years and cooked in the oven for eight. But I wanted to yep. try. I really wanted to understand. I wanted to love this troubled game so bad and I stayed committed to this relationship <laughs> for hours and hours and Bad hours, idea. ignoring every possible red flag that came my way. But I can't do it anymore, and I feel like I have to make this video if just purely for my own sanity. No, damn. this one is for me, because this damn space game changed me. Yeah. Is he actually playing that? That's kind of cool. Also, his house is absolutely cool. What the hell? It's like old school, but there's so much room. Yeah, American houses are so much, like, better. And I, like, it's just, there's so much space. People often describe Bethesda games as Bethesda games, but what does that even mean? Oh, he's got the same dog, Bichon. Me. In 2011, I would have said open world oh, yeah, action I'm, Bethesda games, but what does that even mean? In 2011, I would have said open world action RPG where you can mm. go anywhere, do anything, good or evil, knight or wizard, but you're definitely going to be a sneak archer like every single time without fail. To me, it meant giant world with total player freedom to do what they wanted to do. Don't like someone? Yep. Shoot them in the face. Want someone's <laughs> stuff? Sneak behind their waist. Want to climb that mountain? Yep. Hump it on the face. Fallout 3 was my first <laughs> Betty game after convincing my dad. Added. Nah, dude, it's not violent at all. You you don't have to be uh, violent. You could choose to be good and talk your way out of every situation. Which was 
that is the best part about having older brothers because you just they could do the convincing for you and you don't have to convince anyone total fucking bull crap yes these games <laughs> might be rpgs but they heavily lean on the action part of action rpg can you sometimes do quests non-violently definitely but more yeah. often than not your to-do list you revolves violence. around you killing yeah. people and things and spiders and ghouls mm -hmm. and there's usually not a whole lot of wiggle room around that part a lot of the time oh your choices God. are boiled down to okay so do you want to set them on fire first and then shoot him or just do him raw. If you play Fallout New Vegas made by Obsidian, those are some RPG ass RPG choices where I feel like the player has way more freedom to express themselves morally, ethically, whatever in a given quest. But as much as okay. I gush about New Vegas on this channel, there is something missing in this game when compared to Fallout 3. Atmosphere. I think Bethesda uh... typically crushes that shit. Even even though New Vegas is a much better game mechanically, Betty's world felt a lot more engrossing to explore. Even if a lot of the supposed freedom promised to the player is kind of an illusion. You know, you can't actually kill anyone oh, if they're an essential wait, really? NPC for a quest line. They just take a nap on the floor. Still, Bethesda uh, does a really great job at making you feel like you're on this grand adventure. And the soundtracks, yeah. dude, oh my god, the Skyrim True. soundtrack alone oh, might be up best. there with Chrono Trigger for like the greatest video game score ever made. All of these songs make you feel like you're living inside of an ancient blade made of suede. Oh my oh, god, I'm getting nugget. really fucking tired of always coming home to this dude saying some more stupid crap. Hi, I'm Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, Attorneys uh, at Law. law. Thanks to uh, Opera okay. GX for sponsoring this video. Is your browser boring? Does it make you want to go outside? Don't, don't go out there, there's wolves out there. Opera GX is a web browser for gamers That's that you I can feel. customize. He In the GX me. store located over here, you can get a variety of browser mods such as my own that have their own background music, keyboard sounds, opening and closing of tab sounds, theme and color of the browser itself, unique oh, wallpaper. Geez. You can also disable and enable specific mods in the mods sure. menu located on the sidebar. Does your web browser keep you informed on all things gaming? It doesn't? What the hell? With the GX corner located over here, Opera GX mm -hmm. will keep you up to date with free games, the best deals, the hottest new releases, and all gaming good. news all in one convenient corner. Look at this deal. Look at this deal. Are you seeing Just the deal? Like it. Look at the f***ing deals, Derek! Don't worry about losing all your stuff from those other browsers. Opera GX has a handy import tool to quickly take all of your shit, like bookmarks and cookies and browsing history from your old rinky-dink browser to your sexy new sports car browser. And Opera GX also oh, works yeah, with baby. every Google Chrome extension. If you download Opera GX using my special link located here or down below, you'll also have access to a unique feature where you'll see all of my 12 most recent videos in your GX corner, so you'll oh, never miss God. it when I upload a new video video in three months. Use this I link located it. down below to download <laughs> Opera GX today. Thanks again to Mr. GX for sponsoring this video. Now let's Mr. get on GX. back to whatever the hell <laughs> Super Nakio JKO64 is. To, he's counting stars. Let's, let's see you. if he counts Wait, all 120 of them. He probably didn't even do TikTok clock yet because he's a square? worthless piece of shit. Right, but because Bethesda games are so unique and so dearly beloved by so many fans, People mm -hmm. often give them a free pass when it comes to certain issues because, eh, it's a Bethesda game. What are you gonna yeah. do? Issues such Their community keeps them afloat. Not gonna lie, their community with their mods and their just everything. Like, for example, uh, instead of like day one patches, people wait for the mod patch to the, for the people, the modders, to do it for them. They're so hard carried, it's ridiculous now. And instead of hiring those mods and bringing those mods on board, the modders, sorry, bringing them on board to help them fix their games that they are truly in love with, they just ignore them and just make make out they're non-existent and that Bethesda claims all of the benefits and doesn't doesn't see what their community does for them. That's the Jazz. sad thing. Dated melee combat and extremely dated gun combat, even for the time. Brain dead enemy AI. Clunky UIs that always have to be mm -hmm. fixed with mods. Optimization and performance issues that always have to be fixed with, mods. with mods. Enough bugs yep. to fill a fucking terrarium that always carried. have to be fixed with mods. If any other AAA shooter had the same issues that yep. Fallout 3 had, yep. where the guns barely even functioned and yep. cast bullets from their mouths like spells from a wizard's sleeve. And the game oh ran at God, 6 yep. frames per second on the PS3 because, oops, you saved too many times don't do that people would rot but because these issues yep. are part of a giant package and the appeal is usually greater than a sum of its janky parts mm -hmm. people just kind of go eh, what are you gonna yep. do it's a bethesda game which sure maybe in 2008 maybe some of the stuff yeah, could be ignored 
but yep. it is not 2008 anymore. Hell, no. it is not even 2011, my brother. No. In a post-Skyrim world where they have re-released that game so many times oh, and it too has sold many. over 60 million too copies now. Many the times. whole, but it's a Bethesda game, excuse is, gone. you guessed it, shit from it. a butt. Fallout 4 yeah. was when I could no longer stay blind to Bethesda's strong yeah. reluctance to leave the caveman Stone Age prehistoric time. <laughs> Dude, you can still feel all of the typical creation jank underneath everything. You still had to edit an I&I and I file to change the FOV or turn off mouse acceleration. The wow. physics were still tied to the frame rate. The load times could still go on for an eternity. But hey, at least they made guns function like kind of actual guns this time, which should be <laughs> the bare minimum for a first person yeah. shooter in 2015. Meanwhile, Halo's 14 getting ready for her winter <laughs> formal. Simple things for a shooter like swapping weapons or throwing grenades felt super unresponsive and wonky, like the game was constantly fighting you what on every hell? delayed input. And again, 2015. This this wasn't like a long time ago. No, wasn't at all. But man, I still played the shit out of this game, and it yeah, is yeah. the Fallout 4 is the most bare bones RPG. Where Fallout New Vegas went left toward old school traditional Fallout games, Fallout mm -hmm. 4 was like, all right, so it's kind of like janky Minecraft but with guns, which turns oh out my God. is actually pretty fun. The gameplay loop well, of exploring a detailed Bethesda world filled with cool stuff, getting loot and supplies from fighting baddies and using mm -hmm. vats, using those supplies to upgrade your guns, working on your settlements with the janky ass builder that also has to be all fixed right. with mods. Yeah. It was all pretty fun to me. Objectively, my critic brain is like, yeah, this game has a lot of flaws and the dialogue system really sucks and the perk tree sucks and the role playing options are basically non existent and the main story makes like zero sense if you stop and think about it because if someone was searching for their kidnapped baby son why would they stop and help a bunch of other families first and eat a hundred rat roaches but subjectively my yeah. bethesda brain is like oh boy i better scrounge up some more of these desk fans <laughs> even with all its jank and there is a lot of jank in fallout 4 like any area downtown just straight up doesn't run well at all for what it was i had fun with fallout 4 but what it was was unfortunately a very crystal clear sign Oh, <laughs> what the hell? And the Bethesda was falling behind the times so harder than ever before. Also, I went to kindergarten and first grade here and uh, walked home wow. from school one day and realized we got out early because of 9-11. I don't know why I'm oh. talking about that right now. Oh, I wish I could say I was shocked God. when Fallout 76 turned out to be shit from a butt, but dude, I wasn't shocked at all. Not trying to be on some cool guy shit, but the second I saw the reveal presentation and how it was gonna run on the same janky ass engine that barely manages mm. to work as a single player game, and now it's gonna be multiplayer online, <laughs> like www.com type online. Yeah, Todd, and God. I'll be a monkey's uncle. Oh, my sweet bimbo, you have returned. You all know this story. Game comes out, one of the worst launches ever. Bug Terrarium is like 16 times the yep. detail. Bethesda gets super <laughs> scummy about refunds and then get super scummy yep. about pushing these overly priced microtransactions yep. also cheaps out on the canvas bag that's supposed yep. to be included in the collector's edition it was in an story I made one of the best videos on this the one of the best videos i think i've seen on youtube so if you ever want to watch that watch that i've reacted to that as well it's very good. awful fallout 76 is like the poster child for taking advantage of yep. devout fan base and releasing mm -hmm. a clearly unfinished faulty product i see a fire. lot of people online chalk up 76's failure too well it wasn't todd and his main team that made the game it was their there was their b team bethesda yeah, austin but i've heard of that i'm pretty sure that's not the full story according to Ooh. several anonymous devs that worked on 76 as quoted in this Kotaku article that you should check out. People from mm. multiple Bethesda studios worked on this game. Oh. Senior staff from Fallout 4's team, staff taken away from the Starfield team, staff taken away from wow. the Redfall team at Arcane, which Jesus Christ, that's a whole that's a whole thing on its own. Jiminy Cricket and a jockstrap. Oh 76 as described in this article sounded like a massive live service black hole that no one wanted to touch. Because the writing was all over the bug cover walls that it was never going to end well. But in typical AAA game dev fashion, QA teams get treated like total shit and upper management mm -hmm. ignores mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. raised and continue mm -hmm. to force everyone to crunch toward this deadline they knew they were never going to yep. make. And yeah, Todd Howard may have not directed 76, but he's still listed as executive they producer. Produce, and he's the mm -hmm. one that went on the big stage and was like, this mm -hmm. is the biggest game we've ever made. It's 16 yeah. times awesome. You're all going to nut. Yo, run that job.
Bethesda have a big knack of over promoting their games to the point where people are expecting this amazing thing. If they would just went on the stage, yeah, we got a multiplayer version of Fallout. Um, it's going to be good. Check it out. Instead of doing 16 times the detail, do all this crap, and then just, yeah. Just Never join! And pre-orders go crazy, <laughs> and everyone's hyped out of their mind, yeah, and yeah. then it comes out, and it's atrocious. And suddenly yeah. now Todd is all, yeah, we knew it wasn't going to be like a high Metacritic huh? score game, but you know what? It sold really well. It's not about how it starts. It's about what it becomes. Thank you very much. Wow. You'll run that John Denver joint. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> According to that same article, Todd was very adamant on the whole no NPCs feature, no matter how what? much the dev team pleaded that it was an insane what? choice for Bethesda. You know. I've heard they've only recently put NPCs in, and the game's ten times better. The studio most closely associated with NPCs. But also, maybe Todd isn't the main bad guy responsible, you know? Maybe he was true, just under true. a lot of pressure might from just be big the voice. money investors and parent wrong. company Zenimax to make a live service cash cow that would exploit fans and inevitably make a ton of money. I don't yeah. know all the details, but there's enough breadcrumbs to make it insane to me that someone along the food chain with authority, whether Todd or otherwise, didn't stop and adamantly scream. Hey, uh, let's maybe <laughs> delay this game permanently. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Regardless of whose fault I 76 was, was cool. the damage was done and the pressure was on. After an underwhelming and outdated Fallout 4 and an mm -hmm. underbaked and severely malnourished Fallout 76, Bethesda really needed to reach for the Skyrim once again and dunk another classic into our laps. Mm -hmm. But Todd, he don't play basketball. He plays chess. Uh oh. Chapter two. Don't let me leave, Murph. I was the kid. I was writing games when I was, you know, 12, whatever. And uh, the other kids in the block would say, you know, I'm going to play quarterback for the Cowboys. And I'd be like, I'm going to make video games and everyone's going to play them. Like, you dork. Go back what to the chess to club. What was happened to that Todd Howard, man? <laughs> yes, I was in the chess club. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> not to like Todd Howard. Yeah. He has this Michael Scott type charisma that's mm. weirdly hard to resist. And I find True, his story of like, repeatedly does, yeah. applying to Bethesda only I feel to be that rejected reference. over and over really inspiring. Because once he got mm -hmm. his leather jacket ass wearing yeah. ass through that door, he would direct Morrowind, executive produce Oblivion, direct Damn. both Fallout 3 and Skyrim. Love him or hate him, the man's resume speaks for itself. And good God, would you Ooh, look at bad. that jacket. Sorry, for being janky. considered AAA, Bethesda is not a very big studio. Around 100 people made Skyrim, and they currently only wow. employ like 420 people across all of their studios. For comparison, mm -hmm. at least a thousand people worked on GTA 5 before its release, Jesus and 6,000 different Christ. people have worked on it since, which is crazy to me considering how yeah. slow GTA Online still is. Boom. Yeah, I agree. Hello, and times are terrible. On the one hand, I think it's really impressive that Bethesda is much smaller than other big name studios because it means they must have some really powerful paladins over there casting some serious buffs. But also, when you're making that AAA money and your games mm. continue to come out janky as shit, maybe hire mm -hmm. some more fucking people to make your games actually function properly when you sell them for $70. One source yeah. from that same article said, Not being funny, you're up there with the top sales of 60 million copies of Skyrim. Yet you only have a hundred bloody employees. You're taking the piss. You, you're taking the piss. Spend your money, stop being tight, and make some decent games. Bethesda is a big company. You could even make it so it's a game every two years ev instead of every five years. Or whatever they do. That thinks it's sort a small your stuff out. With a mentality of, well, this worked in the 90s, so we're just gonna keep doing it. I mean, what? yeah, after playing Starfield, that's definitely what it feels like. Boy, yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I booted that song bitch up. It was like it was like seeing an ex for the first time in eight years. A poorly optimized wow. ex who struggles to have human like <laughs> facial expressions. Starfield <laughs> isn't even just Skyrim again, but in space, which was always Todd's <laughs> elevator pitch. No, it would be such an improvement if it was. But no. This is not a Bethesda game based on the definition the dumbass by the piano gave earlier. That signature no. Bethesda open world exploration and sense of scale and freedom and that feeling of, ooh, there's something interesting around every corner. Gone. But you yep. are, 
Oh, there's like a thousand planets. How can it get? You can only get to by loading screens, my ad. You can't actually fly to the planets. You're not controlling the ship. It's a cutscene. Any more open world than that. Yeah, and you want to know what you do on 99% of those thousand Nothing. planets? This, you walk and walk yeah. and walk and sprint and jump and jetpack jump and get really good at watching your O2 sprint meter go up and down and up and down. There is no rover to drive. There is no ship to fly. You just walk yeah. and walk and walk until you get to the most copy pasted structure that sure. you have already seen a bunch of times. Starfield is the exploration equivalent of holding the player two controller that isn't actually plugged in. It is the illusion wow. of planetary exploration duct taped together by a thousand loading screens and a strong desire to waste like so I said. much of your time. Yep. Let's talk about fast travel. Can you oh say fast travel? Yep. Fast travel. Can you say loading screen? <laughs> loading screen. Loading screen. Loading screen before fast travel? After fast travel. Loading screen. That is absolutely true. And for that, I need a bit. Loading screen. Fast travel play. Fast traveling to complete a quest. Fast traveling to start a quest. That's so silly. Loading screen. <gasps> Peekaboo. Loading screen. Can you say fast travel? Wasting <laughs> your time? No. Wasting my time? Yes. 2023? Bethesda released this in 2023. Oh no! Can you say leather jacket? In other Bethesda <laughs> games, you wanted to walk to your destinations because fast traveling meant you might miss out Not on some neat dungeon or cool, unique I structure like or wacky enemy along the way. Not only is fast travel highly recommended whenever possible in Starfield, True. but it is straight up required. You cannot yeah. fly your ship from planet to planet or even Boom. on a single planet. You can enter your ship with a nice. I felt like a moany little. Uh, uh, child, but it, everything he's saying I've said, so I'm, I'm, I feel validated right now. Loading screen and then sit in your pilot's chair with a nice unskippable animation and then take off with another nice loading screen and then pick your destination from space and fast travel there with another loading screen and then click on the planet to land with another loading screen. Or if your destination is in space, do another unskippable animation to dock your ship followed by another immediate loading screen. Jesus but hopefully Christ. if you've already discovered the specific location you want to go to, you can, fast you can travel. just fast travel straight yep. there. The second I realized I was avoiding my ship when ever possible you know mm -hmm. the central core part of a space exploration game yep. it was over the most heartbreaking part mm -hmm. is that the ship builder is fucking amazing it's like virtual legos it is by far the best new thing bethesda did with this game but where do you get to mm -hmm. fly your ship that you just lovingly spent Nowhere. three hours making in orbit yeah oh, okay. let's fucking go if you want to see your magnificent creation oh, actually move around and fast travel on mm -hmm. up to space and float around fighting bad guys and running away from cops with the awful bounty system, which I will get to later. I will spend way too much time talking about that later. What's really weird no. is that between the different elements you can mine on planets and the different things you can prioritize within the ship builder, there's enough breadcrumbs here to assume that at one point Starfield was probably more of a survival type space game. Meaning that no, really? landing on a planet maybe served more of a purpose than just sort of wandering around. What, you reckon English, it's rushed? Like maybe the temperature changes in extreme conditions actually mattered more than they currently do, which is like, not really at all. The ship builder even has options to upgrade the fuel tanks or a grav drive so that you can jump further into a system. But if you don't mm. upgrade those things, that's fine too. You'll just have to fast travel to a closer <laughs> system first and then fast travel to the one wow. you actually want to go to. So upgrading that stuff in your ship just saves Pointless. you from seeing two loading screens and now you only see wow. one. Wow. <laughs> How is this game real? True. Starfield has a thousand planets. And I wish it had like five. Yeah. I love that atmosphere, by the way. That that scene. In real. Starfield looks like a movie set. Like it, it looks like he's about to play guitar, roast marshmallows. This looks beautiful. It has a thousand planets. And I wish it had like five. Yeah, not every planet in real life space would have a bunch of cool stuff on it either. Yeah, duh. 
But that's not my point. My point is no. that this is not really a good illusion of anything other than the unfortunate passage of time. No Man's mm -hmm. Sky can also have some boring ass procedurally generated planets. True. But you know what? At least you can actually fly, fly to them. And playing yeah. Starfield is like watching True. a magician pull a rabbit out of a hat, but every time he's about to do it, he's like, no, no, no you gotta close your eyes while I do it though. But what about perform? <laughs> what <laughs> I'm not a Best Buy Geek Squad looking ass. Don't say I am. Starfield may have been made with the shiny new Creation Engine 2, but you ain't fooling anyone with that too, Todd. You may. Oh, bro, there was this this uh, I would I'd, I'd say life hack where if you turned off a certain thing, I can't remember what it was. It was in the settings. You turned off like shaders or something. The graphics wouldn't change, and you gained like plus 20 FPS. And it's like, what the hell is that even for? have slapped a spoiler on it, but it's still a f***ing Geo Metro. I'm still editing an INI &I file just to change the FOV or really? turn off wow. mouse acceleration to make aiming feel better. I'm still clicking on doors and seeing that all too familiar fade out loading screen all the time. Why did you not optimize this game for PC? Damn. Uh, we did. It's running great. It is a next gen PC game. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game. You can run it on a toaster. Shut up, Todd. But it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it, and the fans are responding awesome. I don't mean that. Todd could be a cool guy. I don't mean that. But don't lie to people, okay? Todd, I upgraded my PC. But I still can't turn on HDR or even mess with the brightness settings, even though the wow. Xbox version already has HDR. And to get a decent wow. frame rate, I have to use upscaling, but I have an NVIDIA card, and you only have FSR supported with no DLSS. Oh, someone already modded DLSS into the game within, like, a couple days? Oh, programmers are making comprehensive breakdowns on Reddit detailing just how poorly optimized the game is? Nah, if Todd said it's optimized, then it's probably optimized. I believe him. <laughs> I will follow optimized. my Nord brother into the pearly gates of Sovereign God and finally graze my hand upon that holy level. Yeah, Breaking news, as of November 15th, Bethesda is finally patching Starfield, adding an FOV slider, poorly implemented HDR, wow. and much needed DLSS support. Along with clear massive performance gains for both CPU and GPU areas, it's oh, almost as if the game did in fact wow. launch very unoptimized. The wow. timing couldn't be better, two months after everyone already stopped playing it. This game hurts Damn. my stupid giant head. I can't understand. It's almost they interviewed a person that wasn't on the ground doing the work properly and understanding what was optimized and what wasn't optimized. They're interviewing a guy that's nearly at the top of the bloody food chain that don't know nothing. <laughs> get someone in there that knows what they're talking about. They get PR Todd Howard in. PR Todd Howard don't know what's going on. He checks in every week. Goes on a holiday. Probably got 12 houses in Miami. Stand it, I can't seem to do anything right after experiencing this so-called game. Oh my god, I um. didn't even bring that up yet, god damn it. In Starfield you can build settlements, and you have more freedom than ever with the building, oh, yeah. but there's not a whole lot of motivators to interact with it other than harvesting resources from a planet largely void of life. Add that to the super confusing structure of actually trying to connect your settlements across star systems and all the fast travel screens in between and your ship cargo and your inventory and getting over encumbered and ugh. The Fallout 4 it wasn't fun because the builder was good. Hell no. It's janky as hell and super frustrating. You need to but get it was fun to because you were that. bringing life back into the apocalypse and building off of really cool existing unique structures so that the dumbass mm -hmm. settlers could take back the land. But all of that was <laughs> powered by the initial core desire of actually wanting to go out and explore and shoot stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. You shoot guns in this game. Uh, Starfield also has oh, guns. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Actually, that's why I give to props to Starfield. I think the, the shooting's semi-okay. It's not bad. Starfield has perks wait, just wait, like Wait, 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 sorry. Dead men tell all tales. <laughs> to literally everyone. Oh, that was a good Pirates Caribbean movie, by the way. Dead men tell no tales. I, I actually like that one. That was like the one that uh, brought me back to the franchise and then they got rid of Johnny Depp and now they're bringing him back if they apologise. So. Starfield has perks just like Fallout 4, and one of those perks is called Rapid Reload, and it does uh, exactly what you think it would do. It makes reload? your reloads faster. Probably. At least that's what it should do. I'm a gamer. Oh. I like going fast. F it. Throw it on, Todd. Send send me the bill. It's on, the, it. it's on the house. Days later, I'm playing the game, and I throw my last grenade. 
yeah. I reload my gun, and it's way faster than usual. What's going on here? Come to find out, that perk hasn't worked the entire time I've had it, because evidently, yeah. if I have any sort of throwable equipped rapid reload, just doesn't work. I thought maybe I was alone, but nope. I looked it up and apparently it's a common bug that at least as of November That's 15th still crazy. persists. Crazy. Also, you know that text that appears at the top of the screen in Bethesda games when you're doing stealth hidden. that says yep. hidden? Not only does this 2023 game use the same bare bones stealth mechanics that are like mm -hmm. 20 years old at this point, seeing that text up top, that's a perk now. And you can spend another whole ass perk point, and I quote, to upgrade the stealth meter, which just oh, shows you if you're stuffed. being close to being detected, which is basically what? exactly what the eye reticle yeah. thing already did in Skyrim. Oh, well, this is way better and we're spinning the point, trust me. The gunplay in Starfield is an improvement up. over Fallout 4, but that's like saying a bicycle is an improvement over a Razor scooter. It's still not an AK-47. The gu <laughs> guns generally work a bit better with less delay. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. a bit more agile. You have a jetpack, which mm -hmm. sometimes that can be fun. But as a shooter, in 2023, this game is still getting lapped by games from 2012. Hell, games from 2007. 2004. I'm serious. Sit wow. down, play Starfield for an hour, and then go boot up Far Cry 3, or Bioshock, or Call of Duty 4, or oh, any course, game in the it. orange box, and then go back to Starfield and tell me how it feels. Especially That's on crazy. controller. It just feels wrong. Fallout 4's shooting was barely serviceable only because of everything that surrounded it. It worked good enough because you got to explore a cool map and frequently fight cool, varied enemies using vats. In Starfield, the yeah. cool map is gone. The enemies are sometimes varied, but it is predominantly brain-dead humanoid space pirates that will just wow. stand there and let you shoot them. And Vats doesn't exist anymore, so the act of shooting Why did they someone get rid of needed to feel really, really good. Throw in the still clunky melee combat, the super unintuitive UI of menus inside... Vats was kind of OP though, but why did they get rid of Vats? Is there a reason? Is it because they wanted to stay away from that, or...? Whoa. of menus and the d-pad weapon swapping from fallout 4 because apparently having a weapon wheel might make the creation engine explode and what you have uh, is a worse version of something that you have already played eight years uh, ago all right so what about wow. quests bethesda has always been so strongly associated with npcs and quests here's an example of the most common mm -hmm. basic ass type of quest in skyrim hey can you go to this dungeon and kill a bad guy all right mm -hmm. sounds good you know what i'm even just gonna walk over there because it's not that that far whoa what's this a dragon? a dragon in this economy well i mean i'm here i may as well ladder stall tomahawk the dragon real quick all right that's done um what what was i did oh right dungeon. Ooh, whoa, 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 hold on a second <laughs> there's a cave right here True. I mean, I'm there here. There is a lot I'm of distractions. All right, that was a pretty cool cave, and I, I feel like I got some cool shit out of that. Uh, anyways, uh, oh, die dungeon. All right, let me just stealth archer these freaks real quick. Get some loot. Okay. I'm done. That was a pretty enjoyable, fun hour of gameplay I just got to experience. Here's an example True. of the most common basic ass type of quest in Starfield. Hey, we lost our scientist yeah. friends. Can you go find him? We don't know where he is because yeah. we don't have any walkie talkies or email or texting or, or cell phones in this in this planet, True. in this world. Yeah, sure, I guess. All right, damn. He's kind of he's kind of out there. Whatever. I'm sure some cool stuff will happen. There's along nothing the way. in between. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I sure am getting pretty good at sprinting and jetpacking and you know, I, I bet the cave will have like a cool monster in it or something once I get there. Oh. Right. It's oh. literally just you. Man uh, standing now I have to take you back with me. Well, okay, uh, apparently I can, can just fast travel back, but I don't take you with me. What? So I just went to tell you that your friends are looking for you and now you're finding your own way back and going back. So why the <gasps> hell did I even need to come find you in the first place? What the hell even is this That's game, so dude? I shit you not, that type of quest pops up all the time. And no. even if it is an Operation Go Rescue Baby Scientist, it is something similarly mindless and uninspired. A lot of quests in Starfield just play out as a game of fast travel telephone. Where you talk to one person and they're like, hey, go tell this person in another galaxy that I said this. And you're like, okay. And you go through several fast travel loading screens and land at a place and go through another loading screen and then walk through a city and get to another place and talk to them. And then you finally talk to the person and they're like, well, 
tell them that I said this. And so you, oh, you do all of that no, again, and you go sure. through all the fast travel loading screens and the loading screens and the entering building loading screens, and you're like, all right, well, they said this, and it's like, is this what we're doing now? Like, if I'm, like, eight years <laughs> old and you told me, like, take all the graphics and stuff away that, like, hey, mm. this is what video games are going to be like. He said she should. be like, should. what the fuck? And this game yeah. is not a super in-depth choice, complex, branching, narrative, rich dialogue CRPG. Like, I don't expect that from Bethesda, and that's fine. I, I never have. But if you're not that and you're also not successfully doing the thing that largely defines your games, aka satisfying and rewarding open world exploration, then what the hell even are you? Like, I don't know what genre I would even call this game. Oh no, I'm being... Hold up, we're What's that? What's <laughs> going on? on a bounty. Oh man, we're, we'll talk, we're gonna talk about the bounty in, in a bit. That's really funny timing. All right, well, <laughs> sorry gaming. <laughs> Before the game came out, Phil Spencer, Xbox guy, uh, mm -hmm. said something along the lines of, I don't remember exactly, but it was like, ah, I played it so many hours, whatever, I'm going full space pirate. And I got excited when I heard this because I love game systems that let you f*** yeah, around and find out. Me. I'm Ooh. sure some of you remember how I obsessed over the wanted bounty system in Red Dead 2 because I just love pushing things and trying to understand how they mechanically work. Look how young he looks there. Wait, oh, I think my headset Understand how they mechanically work. Oh, no, no, wait, that must be the, the video. But yeah, that's, uh... Look how young he looks. To be fair, he just grew out his hair and grew out a beard, but... He's wearing the glasses I'm wearing now. It's gone quiet for some reason. The music must be copyrighted. Bounty system. Hoggers. Spoon. I don't know what's going on. He's talking, but there's no volume. JK! JK! in jail. Okay, he's back, he's back, he's back, he's back, boys. Boys are back. Don't worry, he'll be back. We don't actually want to throw you in jail, but we want you to be an informant in the uh, space pirate fleet departed style. You fucking rat. Gone again. Jake's gone again. We've lost him. Well, good video naturally really did that. It was a total bloodbath. Like, I killed so many dudes and I racked up such a high bounty, but I noticed that a lot of the named NPCs wouldn't actually die when I shot them, which was a bit concerning, but I, I just kept on fighting. And eventually I fought my way all the way into the cockpit and there was a second where I was like, oh shit, am I about to hijack this police ship and get the fuck oh, out of here? No, nope. I'd be sick. Can't, oh. can't fly this ship. And before people Why? go in the comments and say, oh, it's because you got to upgrade your pilot license thing. Nope. Y you still can't fly it. You can't oh, fly why? this ship or a whole lot of other ships for that matter, no matter what. Just like you can't kill a lot of NPCs, no matter what, because Bethesda wants you to do space their way. This ship, bullshit, <laughs> uh, yeah. isn't exclusive to just that quest either. Uh -oh. If you've played the game, you know that a lot of the times when you land on a planet, another ship will coincidentally land around the same time and you can see them and run over there and fight them. And you would assume, yeah. ah, I just killed all these pirates. All right, still logical ship. next step. Loot the ship. Take yeah, the that. ship. But a lot mm -hmm. of the time, not every time, but a lot of the time, at least for me, it just wouldn't let me. Most of the time I just saw this oh. prompt and I I didn't know why. So that bounty I mentioned during the why? shootout with the space cops, yeah, the it's very easy to quickly rack up a very high bounty in this game. And whenever you travel to a planet that has a major city, they do a forced contraband scan on your ship before you can land. Do I even like video games anymore? They also check to see <laughs> if you have a bounty in that star system. Yo, I feel that sentence. That sentence hit home. Video games are kind of suckage right now. The only reason I play games right now is because my friends play games. That I am not in love with video games right now. Contraband can be hidden to help avoid detection on the scan, but it requires having hidden cargo space on your ship. Why am I here? <laughs> Why am I doing any of this? Normal <laughs> items that you can pickpocket or steal aren't marked as contraband, but they are marked as stolen items. They have this little red icon, but contraband icon... Contraband, oh. contraband items always have this orange icon because it means they're extra illegal. Help me. Yep. So let's start here. <laughs> Say you want to be a grimy little space thief, so you're constantly mm -hmm. pickpocketing and stealing stuff wherever you go. In typical Bethesda yeah. fashion, a lot of the time, if you're sneaking and stealing, you won't get caught stealing. Hope you spent the perk point on the stealth thing, but oops, sometimes you just do get detected, even if no yep. one is around to witness wow. you murder right. that person, except that person, right. and no one is around to witness you steal that cup, except that cup. Suddenly, everyone in the galaxy 
Just he knows that it was specifically you that stole that cup, even stealth. though apparently cell phones or email or fax machines or texting don't exist based True. on the context of most of our fucking quest objectives. I don't want to do this anymore. Please let me go. So now you have a bounty in that star system, and then you're like, well, fuck, if I already have the bounty, then I, I guess I'll just I'll just keep doing it. If anyone gets in my way, I'll shoot him because I'm a freak. That's my identity now. I'm a freak. I wasn't born this way, but I was molded by Todd and his uh, and his leather. So you're traveling around, stealing <laughs> stuff from all these planets, trying to have a grand old time, and your bounty is getting pretty stacked. But oh shit, there's a main story mission in a city that you haven't been to yet in a star system oh, that you have that giant no. bounty in. You get scanned, the cops are pissed. You can choose to fight them off and grab drive fast travel away, but if you want to ever enter that city, you're gonna have to do something about that bounty. So you warp back, and what? this time you're like, alright, well... I can't pay the bounty because it's insane, so I guess take me to jail. And when you go to jail in this game, the cops will not only remove every single item from your inventory that was ever stolen, which slowly <laughs> lists away at the top of the screen wow. one by one, which this this is never explained in the game as like some lore accurate space no. technology that tracks ownership. It's just magic where a cop four planets away knows that you stole this specific <laughs> Ah, uh, to be fair, Skyrim was the same, right? If you stole something, it would still have that little logo next to it. And if you went to prison, your stuff would be taken away from you if you had stolen it. Because it's, it's considered stolen, even if you get taken to prison. But, I understand where he's coming from. But your punishment for jail time is an XP debt. It will never lower what? your current level, but it will erase oh. any current XP progress that you've made towards uh. leveling up, and potentially even put you into the negative as well, if it's high enough. Which it will be. This what? is kind of like how jail time and oblivion could randomly lower some of your skills. Starfield says, hey, we know we can't actually force the player to sit in a jail cell, but we want there to be some sort of consequence for it being bad. And part of me is like, damn, oh. that's actually kind of interesting and creative. Yeah. Yeah, except yeah. leveling up takes a long ass time in this mm. game. For example, to level from level 10 to level 11, it's around 900 XP and it only gets exponentially more grindy the higher you wow. get. So if you have a high bounty, which is not hard to get, you will be in this much debt. Have fun crawling out of that hole, you filthy little pirate bitch. It's also worth wow. noting that much like a lot of stuff in this game, this mechanic is barely explained at all, and the only way to realize that you are it's in XP doing it. or track it is to look at the status screen. I understand having yeah, some I'm... sort of punishment for doing something bad and getting mm. caught. I, I really do. But when leveling is this grindy, and the perks you get from leveling up don't actually work or Damn. just straight up aren't worth it and the game requires you to be scanned in order to land on certain planets because you yeah. can't actually just fucking fly the land, ship yeah. to the planet in Yo. this goddamn space game being punished this harshly for choosing a play style that is supposed to be viable in the so-called yeah. rpg is just super disappointing or not implementing a way to protect you if you do choose to be in that playstyle. For example, you don't have any hidden compartments on your ship where you can hide items where they, if you do land, they're not going to be like taken away from you and you can't be told off about it. No, that's kind of dumb. It's just, it's forcing a narrative that you can't be a space pirate on the fact that you just, you're just not allowed. The game's not allowing you to do that. Pointing. Starfield would be a disappointment regardless of whatever year it came out, but unfortunately for Bethesda, 2023 was obscenely stacked with fantastic games in each of those specific genres that Starfield takes turns cosplaying as. It is an open world exploration game with little to no actual meaningful exploration. It is a glorified looter shooter that is still catching up to games that are now old enough to be in high school. And it is a role playing wow. game with so few meaningful roles to actually play mm -hmm. in relationships to engage with. I really want to like this game. I am always gonna cheer for Todd and Bethesda because they have given me so many amazing, memorable experiences for the past 20 years that have largely influenced my love for gaming i want the next elder scrolls game to knock it out of the park I true same that's why i'm for i'm supporting them with their new fallout series man they i hope it's good because that's all that to be fair that's all they've got in the, the works right now right is the fallout series hopefully hopefully that they bring that home hopefully they find a market in the like gaming series genre and then they can make like a skyrim series bro that they got like a whole artillery of stuff that they could pull out into that but game wise right now i think they're lacking their company's just lacked
I will always root for anyone trying to make an ambitious video game. But after seeing mm -hmm. what Bethesda has put out over the last decade, I just mm -hmm. couldn't contain these thoughts and feelings any longer. I hope this video was at money. least kind of interesting, or at it. the very least digestible in a way that mm -hmm. sort of made sense, even though no, I, I feel it. like I should be in the psych ward. If you could still see me right <laughs> now, Thank you so much for watching my video, and I'll see you next time. This is actually my oh, off-road yeah, ball, because when I was filming the uh, campfire scenes, my okay. dumbass didn't realize that a yoga ball that I've been using for like six years uh, shouldn't go out in the woods where there's like prickly goat and head things, dirty. and I popped a bunch of holes in it. But fortunately, no! my sister, the same one that I stole the original yoga ball from, had yeah. another gray yoga ball uh, that's like got a bunch of ribs <laughs> on it. Uh, so this oh, is my, yeah. my off-road ball. Also, I only realized recently that there's like no aliens in Starfield, like big-eyed gray fuckers from Signs, not a single mm. one. Yeah, he's not wrong. He is not wrong. That was a good video, man. Actually good. Well, uh, to be fair, I complained a lot in that video. Bethesda is a good company, but it hasn't been a good company for producing games for a while now, and it needs to buck its ideas up, man. Every every game company needs to step up right now. It's not the fact of, I'm releasing a game, it's broken, oh, I'll fix it later. Release a good game that ha isn't broken immediately, otherwise people will stop playing your games. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Make sure you check out the original description down below. I'll see you in the next one. Laters.